Today we're going to be doing this with Adobe XD in the brand new 3D transform feature. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today I just learned that Adobe XD released a brand new feature and that is 3D transforms. Now we all know in the front end development world with CSS, you can have transforms in the X, Y, and Z axis. And that's something before we weren't able to really emulate using Adobe XD and other similar prototyping software. But that's all changed today. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to use it. And of course, being that it's Adobe XD, well, everything is made very intuitive and simple. Uh, let me just show you what we'll be making again real quickly. Watch as these three images come in. There's a 3D transform applied to them. As always, when it comes to 3D and those type of effects, it's best to make things subtle and not overdo things. And I think this is a great use case right here. Very cool. And this is all stuff that we could do uh, using GreenSock animation platform uh, in the front end development process. We click this. And then we have the 3D transforms on the letters and these elements as well. So all in all, very cool. Let's go ahead and get started. One second before we begin, the sponsor of this video is Scrimba. Now, in case you've been living under a rock, Scrimba.com is an interactive learning platform for coders. They recently launched their front-end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content. There are hundreds of interactive coding challenges and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front end developer. So check out the first link in the description below to get 50% off. All right, so to get started here in Adobe XD, um, we're just gonna do a web 1920s just so we have plenty of room to demonstrate our feature here. All right, and of course it's quite easy, um, but let's go ahead and I think we'll just do something like in uh, just some type, type of modern, simple image gallery where we have three different thumbnails um, and then user will be, users will be able to click on them. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm just going to, these are from Unsplash, by the way. Um, I'll go ahead and choose this one. And then what I'll go ahead and do is we will up here when you select this, you'll see the new uh, features is uh, 3D transforms, this little icon. So if we click on it, we'll see this little area right here has three different axes or axi, if uh, I don't even know if that's a thing. Uh, X rotation, Y rotation, and then of course we have Z rotation, X, Y, and Z, just like in CSS transforms. Um, you can either change them up here or you could change them with this little helpful guide, all right? So for us, let's just go ahead and leave it like this. We're not gonna apply the transform yet. Um, what I want to do is we're gonna go ahead and replicate that just a couple times here. So let's I uh, control D and we want equal width between them. And then we'll put this one here, I suppose. And then this one here, there we go. Just uh, some nice photographs for us. So we'll take all three and then just center them. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. All right, I actually, let me be a little bit more anal about my alignment. There we go, centered vertically and horizontally. Now, I, just in case you didn't know, when you place a photograph into uh, an existing element like that rectangle, you can double click into it and um, reposition elements like this. And that's what we're gonna do. So first, before we do that, we're gonna duplicate this artboard because this is the final uh, result that I want. We're gonna animate these in somehow. All right, so the way I'm gonna choose to animate them first is we're gonna going to apply, I'm gonna select all three, uh, a rotation, kind of like that, like around negative 64 degrees on the Y rotation. Then we're going to double click and we're going to drag this one right just above it, just to where you can't see it at all. We'll double click this one. We're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna go a little bit higher up. And then even further higher, we're going to do this one. All right, so now 
we can go ahead and prototype this. So we can just, uh, we could do a tap or we could do a time. We're gonna make a tap though. We wanna make sure transition is auto animate. So uh, down here, 0.3 seconds, um, maybe we'll do like 0.6. And let's do a, a snap and hit play. So now we'll click this, look at that. Maybe we want them to be a tad bit slower. So we'll do 0.9 seconds. Oh, that is so nice, so nice. All right, so that's the first way that you can use 3D transforms. There's like a million ways, obviously. That was one, just one potential use case, but let's take this a little bit further. Um, let's say, for instance, uh, we wanna simulate what happens when a person clicks on this uh, element right here. So let's say maybe it'll, it'll expand automatically. So let's duplicate this, and then we'll go ahead and expand this all the way out here. All right, and I do wanna change the order of these. So um, what I'll do is right here, I want this one to be on top essentially. So we'll take this, drag that to the top, and then take this one as well, drag that to the top. All right, so when somebody clicks this, it's gonna expand this out. That will be the next step. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go to prototype, this is gonna be auto animate. And let's just do like 0.6 seconds for this one. We'll leave it at snap and we'll hit up uh, play. Let's go back with our left arrow key to the beginning. Oh, okay, nice, I like it. Um, we could probably slow that down a little bit, but that's okay. Um, we'll go ahead and take this. So it's gonna be like a multi-step animation here. So then um, what we'll do at this point I wanna make sure I do this correctly. Let's uh, let's back up one second, because I had to think ahead a little bit. Because I want this to be enlarged all the way full screen. And then I want it to also simultaneously dim out to create like a watermark background. So what we need to do is we think we need to think ahead. So we'll duplicate this, and then we're gonna make it black. But it's gonna be zero opacity for now. So now we're gonna duplicate this and then what's gonna happen is we're gonna take both of those elements, we're going to Alt and drag up, and then we're gonna take just the top element and bring the opacity right around there. And this is gonna be a time-based transition this time. So uh, this, we drag the artboard over here, and then we choose time with a zero second delay. We'll leave it at 0.6 just to see how it feels overall. And we'll go back to our starting artboard, hit play, We'll click it, all right. Okay, I like that, very cool. So next up, what we can do is, yes, you can actually uh, trans or apply a 3D transform on type as well. So now what we'll do, take our type tool. I just put a capital D there. We need to make this sucker big and we need to make it uh, higher contrast, which you just did. We're gonna change, I'm gonna use BBoss. Kai, it's a, it's a nice um, sort of condensed font. And I'm gonna put it right there, duplicate, control D, and I'm gonna do this, um, no, we're gonna, we're gonna spell design in some sort of cool manner, like we're artsy or something, not quite. Wait, what am I doing, D, E, Z I N. I don't know why I'm putting another Z there. And then finally, we'll have E. All right, that looks okay. So now we're going to take all these, get those centered up. There we go. And then we're just going to take this and put 90 degrees. Oops, there. Um, and then also we'll duplicate it. We'll get those five back, select them and put it zero. It'd be really cool at some point to have like a stagger animation, um, but uh, feature in, in XD, but um, yeah, we can't do that. We could easily do that using a uh, GSAP once we get into the front end development department, de uh, department if I were to do this in um, HTML. But uh, what we could do now is 
Again, this would be just a time-based animation as well. Um, let's check it out. Nice. I want this one to be slower though. So we'll take this one. Instead of 0.6 seconds, let's do three seconds. Nice, I like that. And just to show that you can, uh, I, for some reason, I wanna do a little bit more to it, although I think it's really cool this way. I, it'd be cool to, to see what it looks like when we do transforms on things that just have borders in them. So we'll just do a one pixel high contrast square thing over here. We'll duplicate it over here as well. Maybe we'll make it bigger. And maybe it'll go, yeah, there we go. And then we'll do one more. There, something like that. Now we'll take these three elements, copy them, then we'll paste them right there. And then what we'll do is, let's make it go from a different axis this time. Not, not Z, but yeah, that way. Okay, so we'll just do 90. All right, cool. One last time. Yeah, it's a little silly. Maybe it's a little bit much having all three of those things come into play. Um, maybe, okay, maybe we can do this. I'm sorry. I'm diverting from my original plan and the original project that I created. Let's take those down. Let's see if that makes it a little bit uh, better. If there's something that's happened, it might be too much. Maybe just decreasing the opacity on some of the elements will really help uh, reduce clutter. Oh, uh, we have to do the same thing over here. So we'll take uh, this, we'll get those three, and we'll take these down as well. Maybe we'll take it down to zero opacity there. There we go. So we'll hit play, click it. Okay, now that's better in my opinion. All right, you know, it'd be really cool is if we could also at some point have mouse-based parallax in Adobe XD. But uh, yeah, there's a million features I'm sure that will come in the future. But either way, awesome, awesome stuff. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. I'm really excited now that we have the ability to prototype in 3D for our user interfaces within Adobe XD. As always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.